Hey everybody, Michael Snyder here, West Coast Weather Watch, January 18th. Here we're taking a look at the Langley Doppler radar here in the coast of Washington State. If we put this into motion, check out this frontal system that came on the coastline this morning here. You can see those individual segments here embedded in the cold front there. And if you look to the right here, this is the velocity scan that shows actual wind direction and wind speed. Anything red there is moving away from the Doppler radar located here. Anything green is moving towards the Doppler radar. So you can see where the wind shift occurred right in line here with this frontal area here this narrow frontal band put that into motion and you can see that blast onto the shoreline there and it weakened as it went in shore on uh, inland a bit here and it, it didn't really impact uh, the metro area too much i mean it's a little bit blustery and rainy out there but nothing like what they got on the coast here early this morning as you can see some pretty intense precipitation in those frontal segments shown there so nice image here on the doppler radar and i wanted to show this down through California really quickly as well. There's some winter storm warnings up down here for some snow, five to 10 inches, 15 to 20 over the higher peaks, some pretty good wind gusts going on down there as well. If we click a little bit further south, this does include I-80 and Donner Pass down there as well. Total snow accumulation below 4,500 feet, 4 to 10 inches above 5,500 feet, 15 to 20. Winds gusting 45 miles per hour as well down there. So heads up with this frontal system as it moves down during the day today. More on that here in a minute. Looking at the infrared satellite imagery here, you can see that frontal system moving on shore here. It's going to drag all the way down through California, moving from northwest to southeast across the region here. It's going to start to bring some snowfall across the Cascades of Oregon, Washington, BC as well. As this colder air moves in over the area, there is even a slight chance of a thunderstorm across some of the coastal regions here. Then we've got a couple more fairly weak systems moving across the area here on in through early next week before we're going to dry out for a bit and then potentially turn cooler and a bit drier here as we move towards the end of the month. We'll look at that also here coming up in a moment. Uh, this is looking at last night's European run. You can see the frontal system impact in the area there. You can see the mountain snows. Siskiyou's watch out there as well. And you can see that front dragging down through California, bringing some pretty good snow amounts to the Sierra Nevada once again here. But that's going to be it for a while here across California, at least in the 10-day period coming up here. And you can see as we go towards the weekend, another frontal system will impact the Pacific Northwest as well. Another round of snowfall, possible convergent zone behind this frontal system also could locally enhance some amounts across the Cascades there. You see that front slide off down to the southeast as well. Then one more weak system as we go on in through Monday shown here. Another round of precip in the form of snowfall for some of the Cascades, mainly of Washington, British Columbia here, maybe northeast Washington as well. As we go on in through the following week, you can see they kind of get some ridging building up over the area. The Storm track starts pointing more towards southeast Alaska as we go out towards the 200-hour period here. And this is day 10. You can see not much precipitation after that. Uh, the third system there, and that third one should be fairly weak here. Now, taking a look here, this is as of this morning. You can see that frontal system impacting the Washington, Oregon coast. It's going to slide down all the way through the Bay Area and then weaken rapidly once it passes there. Just some blustery conditions across the San Francisco Bay Area here and some blustery conditions as the front passes across the Sierra Nevada as well, including portions of eastern Oregon here through Idaho and Montana. There's going to be some snowfall in here with these systems as well. We'll take a look at that here in some detail coming up here. Then you'll see the next system, its strongest as it goes north of Vancouver Island, that frontal system drags down across the Washington, Oregon coast shown here on in through this weekend. And then one more system there as we go on in through Monday. Now here we're looking at 10,000 feet on the European model. You can see the current frontal system driven by this cold air aloft here at 10,000 feet, 700 millibars there. Put that into motion and you can see that move through and drop all the way down through California there, bringing those winter storm warnings here across the Sierra Nevada. Moving out of the area eventually there, next system on its heels there, moves across mainly the Pacific Northwest here. It's going to bring another shot of snowfall for the higher terrain as we go on in through this weekend. Then one more system here will bring some additional snowfall for higher the higher terrain as well. That system does not look very strong at this moment, but it still will bring an additional shot of snowfall. Before we get the break here across much of the northwest and all the way down the California coastline here, as we start to build a ridge of high pressure here along the west coast of North America, more on that here in a moment. Taking a look here, you can see the winter weather advisors all the way down the mountain chain towards the Sierra Nevada here with winter storm warnings in effect here, eastern Oregon included, Idaho, and this is probably going to be extended here over the next day or two as well as winter weather advisories will be issued as the system comes through this weekend all 
also. Now looking at this, light to moderate snow through Wednesday night. Pendleton, Oregon, nice graphic here talking about snowfall amounts across the higher terrain and for the valley areas here. Have your travel plans ready and there's going to be in another round here as we go through this weekend and early next week. So don't let your guard down just yet. We're not to the break yet. That's going to be coming up on in through next week. This is Wednesday through Thursday. This is Missoula, Montana. As you can see, these National Weather Service offices have very good graphics out there. So I highly recommend you use them if you are thinking about traveling or if you need to do any kind of work outdoors or whatnot. But you can see the first shot of uh, snow coming through the region here. Another one's coming this weekend here too, and they're going to bring it probably some winter weather advisories with it and on in through next week. Yet another round will move through early in the week before the break starts to come. Now, Wednesday, Wednesday night snowfall. This is National Weather Service Medford down here. Siskiyou Summit, two to three inches across I-5. So heads up if you're traveling north or southbound. California across the Oregon border there. Higher terrain and get a bit more snowfall. You can see Crater Lake, four to six. Klamath Falls generally under an inch though coming up here. Snow level mainly above 2,500 feet there too. And they highlight the threat to Siskiyou summit here on i5 this is for sacramento national weather service down there moderate impacts across the sierra nevada down there you can see the amounts coming through there this does include i-80 and donner pass down there so heads up for this and this should be the last shot for the sierra nevada here as we go on in through thursday morning before a break starts to come and then potentially picks up again later on in through January and early February. We'll take a look at that and monitor that day by day as well. This is a nice graphic here too. High transportation risk with the fog across the region there too. Experimental fog severity index here. They have different levels of it as you can see here. And you guys know this dense fog can cause some pretty bad traffic accidents and pileups here, especially across the valley areas where those inversions can form there. So I'll be watching this and see how much they update it as well. Now this is looking at total snow Snowfall could share. This is actually last night's model run here. And let's actually look at this. This should be updating now the 12Z European as of this morning. Put that into motion and you can see some pretty good amounts, mainly north of Snoqualmie Pass. But Snoqualmie Pass is going to get some measurable snow through tomorrow morning. Stevens a little bit more, maybe six, seven inches. And you can see some snowfall down through the Sierra, uh, Sierra Nevada here and all the way down through the Oregon Cascades as well. And some shot of snowfall for the higher terrain on in through eastern Oregon, eastern Washington. You can see that push off to the east. Here comes the next system here as we go through the weekend. You can see it brings some additional snowfall to the Cascades, including Snoqualmie and Stevens Pass there. Put that into motion. You can see some additional snowfall for the higher terrain. Probably going to issue some winter weather advisories for Idaho, Montana, along with this round as well. And then yet another system will move through and bring just a, a little bit of additional snowfall on in through early portions of next week here. But you notice California stopped piling up the snowfall here as we went through Thursday. So watch this. Here we go on to, into Wednesday night. This is about 7 p.m. tonight. Keep putting this into motion here. And you can see... There's Thursday morning, 1 a.m., 4, 7 a.m., 10 a.m. So it should be winding down by the time you get towards noon on Thursday here. And then you're going to get a nice break here for much of the region here. California should not be getting any additional snowfall through the 10-day period here. So we're going to build the ridge offshore here of North America. Now, taking a look at what's coming to the future a little bit here. SeaTac, as we go through this weekend here, you see some blustery conditions, that frontal passage as we go through this weekend here. And then trying to look for a fantasy windstorm hunt, not seeing much out into the extended, a little bit of an uptick and some potential activity here through the end of January into early February here. This is Tillamook, frontal system that goes through this morning. You can see the wind gusts that occurred with that, the system this weekend, and then maybe an uptick as we go way off into the extended forecast there. Mount Shasta similar here. This frontal system that goes through is going to bring some breezy conditions down there as well, but nothing too crazy. Just gust into the low 30s probably. And then maybe an uptick in some activity as we go towards the end of the period here. <clears throat> now this is a Canadian showing that cold signal still existing here. This is hot off the presses as of this morning here. This is the last night's European ensemble run there, still showing that cold signal, GFS, similar there. So it's a ways out there, so it's going to be a while. We'll just continue to watch it day by day for now. So here we're looking at the day one categorical outlook here, and you can see it does include Washington, Oregon, California. This would include Vancouver Island as well. General thunderstorm threat risk, mainly west of Olympia, but it does include the I-5 corridor down here across Oregon, and of course, Northern California is shown there. And if you are traveling or have family and friends down through the southeast, just a heads up there, there is a tornado threat down there across the area here too. Mississippi River, Arkansas, Louisiana, a little bit of a tornado threat right near the surface low there across Kansas. Also so, but here in the Pacific Northwest, just a general thunderstorm 
threat today. Now, looking at 6 to 10 day, you can see the West Coast below average signal there as we go on in through the end of January. 8 to 14 day, they've backed off a little bit here, but they still include Western Washington, Northwest Oregon there. And you can see the cold signal in both the 6 to 10 day and 8 to 14 day temperature probability outlook here, which does include some of the central portions of the country as well. We'll watch this day by day and just kind of see how this evolves right now. So here we're looking at the Pacific North American oscillation here. We're kind of been looking at this day by day here. This is the Canadian kind of showing that pattern change coming towards the end of the month there. And the ensemble is a control run getting a little wonky there, but don't pay much attention to that just yet. Here's the European ensemble showing the same thing as well, the pattern change coming there. So we do have some confidence in this change coming towards the end of the month, but we just do not know any details of that right now. Now taking a look at El Nino possibilities as we go through the end of the year here coming up. You can see we're going to rapidly go out of La Nina conditions through February, March, April, May, and June here. Neutral favored here as we go through the middle portion of the year. And then as we get towards later summer and fall, looks like El Nino becomes the favored scenario here across the equatorial Pacific here. So as you can see, this is just a probability forecast here, but the ocean, ocean phases do go from La Nina to, to El Nino. So it's almost you know, a very high confidence that we are going to be going either neutral or El Nino this year. It'd be extremely rare for La Nina to hang around for a fourth consecutive season, but you can't 100% completely rule it out. Now looking across the equatorial Pacific here, sea surface temperature anomaly. You can see La Nina conditions still have been in charge here, but you see the warming of the water here along the coast of South America and starting to intrude and cross the equatorial Pacific there. So that means that La Nina is most likely on its way out here as we go on in through the spring time and towards summer El Nino may even make an appearance here by this fall so we'll continue to watch that and eventually we will start to go over some of those impacts that El Nino has on the west coast of North America here as well so stay tuned for that in a future update here but anyway, yeah, frontal system going through today is going to drag all the way down through California. The stable air behind it, a little bit of a thunderstorm threat, mainly along the coastline here. A couple more systems going to hit the Pacific Northwest, going to bring up a little bit of mountain snow here on the way in through early next week before we start to get a break here across Pacific Northwest here and then maybe start a pattern change towards the end of the month coming up here. But anyway, yeah, we're up over 30,000 subscribers here. I'm probably going to do a giveaway here. One of the members here on the channel, I'll just go ahead and do a random drawing and I'm going to do one for 10,000, 20,000, 30,000. So we got three random drawings to do and then I'm going to send out um, a frame picture of whatever you guys like one of my shots here and I'll somehow um, line this up and work it out over the next few days here and I'll do that giveaway coming up here so if you are a channel member you will be automatically entered into that drawing here coming up but yeah anyway we have a few more storm systems to go before a break then potential pattern change on through the extended we don't know the details of that just yet but we'll continue to watch it on through the end of the month here can't rule out another float with lowland snow as we go on in through February. You guys know how February can be here across Pacific Northwest. But the good news for California, if you're looking for a break, you're going to get rounds of snow on in through tomorrow. But it should be wrapping up at about noon here. And then you're going to get a break for probably about a, at least a week here across California as far as precipitation is concerned. So anyway, I'm starting to ramble on a little bit here. But um, yeah, click like, subscribe, turn your notifications on and Go ahead and join the channel if you want to down below and become a member there. Click that join button if you'd like. And we'll do this again tomorrow, and I will talk to you guys then. Have a good day.